So we're trying to find the inflection points of the graph y equals 2 times e to the negative x squared. And inflection points, remember, are the places where a function's uh, concavity changes from concave up to concave down or concave down to concave up, meaning that the second derivative is going to change from positive to negative or negative to positive. So let's start by actually finding that second derivative. To do that, we'll need to do the first derivative, which is y prime. And... Uh, y prime is going to be 2 e to the negative x squared times the derivative of negative x squared, which is negative 2x. That's the chain rule. So this whole thing is negative 4x e to the negative x squared. That's the first derivative. Now, to find the second derivative, we're going to need to use the product rule because we have negative uh, 4x, which is a function, times e to the negative x squared, which is a function. So remember for the product rule, our strategy is to break those factors into u and v. So I'm going to say u equals negative 4x, and that means u prime is negative 4. And then that means v is e to the negative x squared, and we know that v prime then is uh, similar to this function we already took the derivative of. Uh, negative 2x e to the negative x squared. The only difference between v and our original function is that extra 2 on the front. Okay, so let's write out what that second derivative looks like. The second derivative will be u v prime, which is going to be negative 4x times negative 2x e to the negative x squared, uh, which will be 8x squared e to the negative x squared plus uh, v u prime. My prime's a little ugly there on the u, but v u prime will be negative 4 times e to the negative x squared. Okay, now you'll notice these both have a factor of e to the negative x squared, so I'm going to factor that out. And I'll be left with 8x squared minus 4. And then because that e to the negative x squared has a negative exponent, sometimes we'll write that as a fraction. Uh, 8x squared minus 4 over e to the x squared. And the reason I wrote that as a fraction uh, is that we're going to need to find the zeros and undefined values of this function. And the way you find the zeros for a fraction is just set the numerator equal to zero, and that's what we're going to do. Uh, e to the x squared will never equal zero. That's always going to have a positive value, so all we have to worry about is the numerator. The only way a fraction can equal zero is if the numerator is zero. So on the next slide, I'm going to set 8x squared minus 4 equal to zero and see if we can locate that potential inflection point. So remember, we're just working with that numerator to see if we can find out where it equals 0. And so what we'll do is we'll just use a little algebra. This is 8x squared equals 4, divide by 8, and I get x squared equals 1 half. And so we'll take the square root, but we need to consider both the positive and negative square roots. So we really get two choices here. We get x equals positive 1 over the square root of 2, and negative 1 over the square root of 2. And then to find out whether we have inflection points, we really need to um, make a sine diagram. And so let's go ahead and just set that up. We'll put negative 1 over the square root of 2 over here. And we'll put 1 over the square root of 2 here. And then we'll go ahead and find the signs of the second derivative here. Now, remember, our second derivative was 8x squared minus 4 over e to the x squared. So this bottom value is always going to be positive. When you raise e, which is a positive number, like 2.7 something, to some positive exponent uh, or 0, you're going to get 1 or some power of e. 
So to find the sine of the second derivative, all we need to worry about is the sine of the numerator. Again, makes it easier to work with. Now, the values we're going to test here, in between negative square root 1 over the square root of 2 and positive 1 over the square root of 2 is 0. And uh, greater than 1 over the square root of 2, that'd be 1. And less than uh, 1 over the square root of 2 would be negative 1. And I know that's true because the square root of 2 is like 1.4. 1 over 1.4 is less than 1. Okay, so first of all, let's try the easy one. Let's plug 0 in to this numerator here and see what value I get, what sign I get. When you plug a 0 in there, you get 0 minus 4, which is negative 4. So the value of the second derivative is negative in this section, meaning this thing's concave down. Okay, let's plug a 1 in. Again, we're plugging a 1 in for x. That gives us 8 minus 4, which is positive 4. So these second derivative values are positive, and that's concave up. And again, we'll try plugging in negative 1 into 8x squared minus 4. When you square negative 1, you still get 1. So it's still 8 minus 4, which again is positive 4. So the value of these second derivatives over uh, for these x values over here is also positive. So this is concave up. So this sine diagram shows that we have inflection points at negative 1 over the square root of 2 and positive 1 over the square root of 2. Those are the x coordinates. To get the y values, we have to plug those x values into the original function. So let's go ahead and do that next. Okay, so we're almost home on this problem. We're trying to find the inflection points for the function 2e to the negative x squared. And all we need to really do is find the y values now, because we've located our x values. So I'm going to plug 1 over the square root of 2 into this function where x is. Right, I'm going to put it right here and then see what that gets me. I'll do a little side work over here. When you plug in 1 over the square root of 2 and you square it, you're going to get the same answer you'd get as if you plugged in negative 1 over the two, square root of 2 and square it. So we really don't have to do this once. So we're going to have 2e to the negative, whatever 1 over the square root of 2 squared is. And when you square 1 over the square root of 2, you get 1 half. So this is 2e to the negative 1 half. And the way we deal with that negative sign is we put it in the denominator. So now I have 2 over e to the 1 half, and a better way to write that is 2 over the square root of 2. So the y value for both of these points is 2 over the square root of, not 2, my goodness. Um, this should say square root of e. Sorry about that. 2 over the square root of e. Okay, so our um, calculations have showed us that we have inflection points at 1 over the square root of 2, comma 2 square root over the square root of e, and negative 1 over the square root of 2, comma 2 over the square root of e. Uh, let me show you a picture of the graph, and maybe this will all come together. Uh, let's look on the next screen. So again, I plugged in our function to the Desmos graphing calculator, and that's the red curve, right? So you can see the function here. It's this red curve here. And then I've also plotted our two points. We've got a green one and a blue one, right? And we think these are inflection points. So here's that 1 over the square root of 2, comma 2 over the square root of e. And here's that negative 1 over the square root of 2, comma 2 over the square root of e. And what we're saying is we think these are inflection points. Well, I think the graph supports that. You can see in between these two points, our graph has a shape that is what we call concave down. It kind of looks like a frown. And then right around that point that we located, the curve starts to switch to concave up again. Right, It's scooping upward over here and over here. And so our calculations are supported by this graph. And really, looking at the graph, we could have eyeballed where these were. We knew it was changing somewhere in here. But figuring out those irrational values uh, just from spotting a graph isn't easy, so that's why we use those calculations. Hopefully this helped. Uh, good luck with your work.